All right, Sean, this is for you, buddy. All right, the first step in the water collection, you come off your eaves trough, and there's a device, looks like a Y. I bought those on Amazon. And can you see the little silver thing up there? That moves back and forth for winter or summer. In the winter, you just go down your original eaves trough, like you always do. Now, I open all that up in the, in the winter. And I plug the tops of the tanks and stuff so that nothing, nowhere can water stay, is what I do. Let's see, there you go. You look at that little, see that metal lever? It just moves back and forth. Anyway, this here is called the first dump cleaning system, okay? And what that does is the first blast of water comes off the, the roof with shingles it's going to have a bird poop whatever in it that comes down fills up this reservoir this pipe and you can adjust how big you want it by how big of a reservoir how big a pipe you put i put a pretty good sized pipe on and at the bottom here it bleeds out very slowly dribbles so that you know what happens is this will fill up with the first blast and mine takes about 20 gallons to fill up and then when the water gets to here there's a ball it seals it back up so the leaves and the nasties can't get back in there, can't back flush. And then it just starts coming down and going into your tanks, however you have the tank set up. And there's a million ways to set them up. And if I was to do it again, I wouldn't do it the way I did it. I spent more money than I needed to. I mean, this works, it just, it doesn't need to be this heavy. I went overboard, because that's what I do. This is the overflow here. And it's very important in your overflow that your filter be before it, okay? Because you don't want to get bugs or anything. And up here, you've got to drill holes. Can you see those holes? That's for air. Because if, if, if you didn't, and you had a big, nice, heavy rain, and your water's going over here, well, then you're creating a siphon, and you could drain out your tank. So those holes are to let air in, but you have to make sure anywhere it's exposed to the outside, you got to have a screen to keep the bugs out, okay? You don't want the bugs getting in your water contaminated. Okay, now I'll go around the other side and show you how I did it. This way works. I use two inch PVC pipe and I put lots and lots of uh, valves in line, as you can see, and it works just fine. But I spent more, each one of those valves was 10 bucks and this stuff's heavy to move around when I put my fourth tank over here, I just tried that to see if it'd work. And if I was to do it again, I would just daisy chain with hoses because I'm not pulling the water off that fast. Okay, I could have a Y on each one, hose, Y, hose, and I could have saved, what, $30 and just just the valve. I think the unions were six, seven bucks. So you see I'm saying I went overboard and you don't need to. Hoses work just fine. In fact, just to test it, I ran the pump off just that one hose and one tank and it ran just fine um, now what I'm using for a pump let me go around here is a uh, it's made for an RV and it, it's automatic it shuts on and off it holds 45 pounds of pressure it'll only pump about four gallons an hour a minute I think let me get the lid off here this is an old battery case I had that worked out pretty good all right that's the pump right there a sure flow and here that this has nothing to do with the pump that thing right there that's just a five volt invert uh, five volt uh, regulator and it gives me a meter how much power I got there how much voltage but what that does that powers my cameras I put a couple security cameras out here because you know me I'm paranoid right, those cameras are only 25 bucks a piece a Wi-Fi and what the hell you got power five volts they run off all this and this runs off the solar this is powered 100 percent off the solar power it only pulls seven and a half amps and i run it for just a few minutes at a time in fact that's automated you can buy these switches for like 20 bucks well, it's, it's a timer that turns the water on and off and that goes into the uh it's called a drip system you can buy them from drip works i like drip works they're not the cheapest one but they, they, they've taken good care of me, and it's the one my sister turned me on to originally. This here is uh, 
um, tank water, and I also use it for my hose. You, know. you hear the pump? Well, here the thing's on me, but it doesn't make hardly any noise at all. Now I did mount it with some rubber uh, washers on the bottom, and it comes with some. But sprays a good, and that's not a wimpy spray coming out of it, you know. So that's all there is to the water system. And the tanks on this side are just, because I don't want to run a hose permanently over here, and I think if I run it up in the air like that, they would make the pump just work a thousand times harder than it has to. So, and so far this year I haven't had to because we've had so much rain. Those tanks are more and holding up with it just fine. But when, the, when, when August comes, when it gets hot and dry, what I do then is I just hook a hose to one of these. I got a little another pump that is not a pressure pump. It only runs about three pounds of pressure, but it runs volume. And you can leave it running for hours at a time. Again, a 12 volt off the solar. And I can drain one of those 300 gallon tanks. And I just run my little hose over here. And I hook it into the overflow. That's why I put the valve here and feed it back in. There, so what I, and I'll run one tank at a time. So if I put one tank's 300 gallons, each mark here is about 50. So if you figure all four, it's 200 gallons for each one. So if I'm down this far, I can easily put a whole tank in and it still won't be overflowed. All you, this is a double female. You pick them up at, I mean, you can buy them at Menards, wherever you want to buy them. And you hook the male in the hose there and the female there and boom. And that pump wasn't very expensive. I don't leave that one out. I just, and I power it. <laughs> I wired it all with extension cord stuff. I mean, obviously, it's 12 volt, see? Comes off the solar setup here. And uh, that pump should be laying over here in my junk. I gotta make sure everybody my junk. Terrible. But just that guy, and I did put a filter on it. The beginning, an input filter. Okay, and that, I've been using that for a couple years. It works fine. Oh boy, you gotta put just a little bit of a vegetable oil in there right before you start each time. I didn't do it the first time I didn't read directions. I melted the impeller and I picked it up. I burnt the living snot out of my hand. You put that little bit of vegetable oil in it, runs cool, no problem. Works like a dream. Well, I've got that 45 pound pressure hose going up. Let me get around here. Now this is the, this is the garden I had last year, which I have again this year, but I added on. And I put up everything up overhead so it'd be easier to drain. There's the water and the power runs over. And it runs over here by the greenhouse. It does feed the greenhouse and everything else. Comes over here. And then from here, I feed it into another timer. And I don't have both these go off at once. They go off a half an hour apart. Because I just don't know. I don't think that pump could handle the volume of both of them at once. So you can do these manual too. Click in manual. I always want to go 10 minutes. But We'll do four minutes, give them a little extra drink. And you can get away with that in the middle of the day when it's hot because it's not getting on the leaves. It's feeding right into the soil. In fact, it's underneath the mulch. Click, so it's pumping the water out. We'll go look in the greenhouse in a minute or so. It'll come out of the bottom of the pot. You'll see it there. But this is the part I added on. So that drip works up. You could just run it. You got T's, elbows. It runs here, up to there, all the way over. Feeds all those guys down there, feeds into the greenhouse. Now I put some valves in the line because I might not have it in the greenhouse, so I'd turn it off if I want to. Over here it feeds. Look at my peppers, aren't they doing great? We had a cold start. There's some nice peppers, ain't they? Look at that. This is a big giant pumpkin. I ain't never gonna grow pumpkins up there. I just I want something to grow up on top, that's all. I do. But anyways, see there's a valve there. And that shuts that could shut off the bottom feed and you go up and over. It was down here a valve. I would these valves are like a dollar eighty a piece. When I first did it over there I didn't do valves. I've been adding them in. I think it's a good idea if you can control things. Like this valve controls this part. So if I didn't have anything over here I could easily turn it off. This is just me trying to figure out if I seen on the on the internet about guys people using uh, straw bales, so I tried some. Well, instead of just sitting them there, I actually built a holder for them. 
So that way, if it don't work, I can easily just use them as a raised bed with dirt in it next year. But it's doing something. Got to come out here and tack some of these up again. I want you guys to grow up. Please grow up. I want to cover this whole thing. I think that'd be cool to walk in here and have the whole thing covered. So let's go look in the greenhouse, see if there's any wet from the watering going on. Four minutes might not get anything wet. Oh yeah, there, see it dripping? See it? Can you see it? There you go. That's what it does. That's the dripping. Oh, I gotta stake you up. You fell over. Okay, I'll get in here and get you done. My granddaughter's strawberry plant. We got a bunch of them out there. It's hot in here. Ooh. What is it? 97 in here. Oh boy, we got the tomatoes out here are ripening earlier than they are outside. Could probably because it's warmer. We had such a cold spring. These are extras that I planted because I planted twice as many thinking I half of them would die and I only had one die so I couldn't murder them. My wife wouldn't let me abort the tomato plants so I had to get some of these pots and throw them in here. These are the extras. They were planted a month later than the ones outside were. Then it comes over here. I think I got a valve down here too. Yeah, I went nuts with valves. And then at the end of every one of these, they have another part that I didn't buy the first time. They want you just to twist them over. And uh, see if I can find it in here. It's down here somewhere. Here it is, right there. This comes off. So I'll be able to blow it out with air and get all the water out of it. So that when winter comes and you know it gets a little chilly here in Michigan we'll be able to blow all the water out and not have anything break on us you know, that's the plan anyway that's the plan so there you are Sean there's my deal we're starting to get up there gonna have some cucumbers pretty soon oh hi Mr. B keep up the good work Yep, my employees like it. We drop them off it, put them in the lunch room, and just pull your hand back quick, and you'll you'll lose a, a piece of your body as they rip it off. There's those big pumpkins. Cordy saved the seeds for we had in the stores last year. Cordy gave some seeds to other people. Those pumpkins were like five, six hundred pounds. I don't think they grow that big with me. But you know what I figured out or I learned? I had to move these out of the way so my granddaughter would run over the gator. They're actually. Uh, going into the ground as they go across. My sister hasn't been here in a while. She'll tell me what I have to trim them or whatever. I don't really care if they grow any big pumpkins. I just want them to... I just want it to get big. I like stuff growing. There we are. Here's the night. You know I like the best is coming out here, walking around, and just getting me a little treat here. See, I can now eat these. Last year I couldn't eat them my surge this year I can eat them hey the sunflowers are growing those are the only things I don't have hooked up because I refuse to uh, put more in the ground have it freeze so I just have to bring a bucket out to them right now and then and Sean I don't think you've been here you were here the day we were digging this range right but I don't think you ever seen it finished I'm gonna go show you how bad of a shot I am now I was shooting offhand after I fixed the targets. But I got them all fixed again. That one on the right, that bullseye target on the right, is our oldest bullseye target. That thing was all torn up. It was, it was, the big part was actually blown down on both sides on the ground. So that's what the range ended up becoming that you watched get dug, Sean. It's a lot of fun. Now, when we went over to Steve's house, you were over there shooting with us. I took that one popper with me because they just sit on the ground. That one there, see if you can see it, that one, and that one all right there. Those are the two we had at the, it's my son's house. Look at that. I missed. Isn't that terrible? I missed. 
But I'm a lot better at a bench rest than I am holding it steady. But I hit the target, what the hell. I gotta fix this. This is supposed to go all the way back. Like here. And it did until they decided to set some of that explosive stuff on it. And they blew it up and they blew up my wood. So I just gotta pull it off, put some more wood. I got a bunch of uh, short, not very wide, so I'll make them go this way. And uh, and it keeps these, if not, when you hit these these ones hard, they come up here and they do that and it's a pain in the butt. But it's got to fix it, that's all. That one does it, the little one, that's why that one's there. Look what the lead does. When you're hitting, you're hitting these targets and they, look how it digs into that wood. You don't think there ain't lead coming off those things. You check that out, man. That is just, look at the sides of those 4x4s. Those are now about, about 10 months old. Look at that. Oh. oh wow, look at down there. I'm gonna have I'm gonna come out here and put me a two before on them, I think. Protect them, because those four by fours you gotta dig a hole to replace them. If I would just screw a two before against them, then a two before will get torn up and and the other ones won't. I don't have to dig those holes again. I didn't dig them the first time, Tony did. This guy needs a little work. He's taking a lot of rounds while he's working up groups. He's a little Loose, loosey goosey. I don't know. Got a lot to do. Got the pool open for the kids and Madison and all that. Cordy and them come out and go swimming all the time. Had to work a little harder on it this year than because it wasn't open last year, but we got it going. Sorry you didn't get to come out and go swimming it because it was beautifully clear and everything. So there it is. This is my garden. That's what I was working on. I built those. <laughs> Those raised beds, I built them in February. They knew I had to go out of state for that business thing. We were going to be gone for a week and a half in March. So my wife was mad and hell at me. I was out here, it was colder than the hubs. Of it was ice covered everywhere, which I used to my advantage. I couldn't pick them up to move them. And my granddaughter can't help me like she used because she's always helping her. She's watching her, her brother because her dad's working weekend. So I put skids on them. And I hooked them to the back of the gator, and I just, like a sleigh, I drove them around, dropped them in place. I only had to strong arm the last three or four feet. When you get weak and old, you have to learn to do it without you doing it. You have, you gotta work smarter. There's my tomatoes over there. I gotta look up a video. I know there's something I'm supposed to do now that they got as high as I want them to stop from growing high and let them go out. There ain't any red ones. Oh, there's a red one here. There hasn't been. Okay, they're starting, starting to ripen up out here. Okay, cool. Because the ones in the greenhouse, they, they were warm longer. These, remember how cold it was? It was colder up there where you're at. But these are the carrots I just planted. Forgot to plant them. I planted about a month ago. This is for Courtney. All the celery's for her. She likes the celery. And then strawberries. Because you know what? You just can't have enough strawberries in your life. I'll come out here in the morning and pick some taken to my wife. Oh, here's one. Hi, how you doing? There you are, Sean. Hope everything's going good for you, dude. Nice to see you using that gun I gave you. You're getting good at it. You were hitting the target more than you were missing it. So don't feel bad about that. And you definitely could hit a target a man size if you had to, so don't worry about it. Talk to you later. Goodbye.